TalkLine Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. Welcome to the podcast. And now... You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Welcome back to the program, Mom. Zev Brenner, one of the most competitive races in all of New York State, is the race to become the DA in Nassau County. With us right now is Ann Donnelly, who is a deputy chief of the Nassau County DA's office a career prosecutor with the NASA District Attorney's Office. For 32 years, she served as Deputy Chief of the Organized Crime and Rackets Bureau in the NASA District Attorney's Office. So, a pleasure to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, I, when I looked you up in Wikipedia, I said, wow, I found an Ann Donnelly who's a judge with a very distinguished career. So, I think you share the same name with the, with the judge also who's tough on crime. Yes, I do. She was a former prosecutor also. But she spells you spell with an e at the end, and and she spells without the e. Yeah. Correct. So the big issue, of course, not just in Nassau County but all over New York, is crime, crime, crime. So while there is not a lot of attention paid to races in New York, your race seems to be getting and guarding a lot of activity. I, I would assume that crime is the major factor. Yes, um, you know. Everybody is anxious and worried about crime going up. And one of the things that um, increases the, the non-safety of the county is the bail uh, reform that was passed by my opponent. Um, you know, Senator Mike Janaris thanked uh, Todd Kaminsky for putting pen to paper to make this bail reform happen. So he helped write it. He voted for it, he supported it, and it's just something that makes us a little less safe. So, on a practical level, and you know, so when somebody gets arrested, they're not put in jail, they're let go without any bail for most for right. minor crimes. So, so what happened is that they have it labeled as, you know, violent crimes we can ask for bail. But what people don't realize is a number of crimes in the penal law that have violent outcomes are not categorized as a violent crime. For instance, certain assault cases, arson cases, um, uh, manslaughter charges. These are charges that we can't ask for bail on um, because of the way the law was written. One of the, the things that I specialized in prosecuting in the office was um, the possession of sexual images of children. You know, very young children being sexually abused and these videos being traded cannot ask for bail on those individuals any longer. So people don't realize the sweeping um, effect it has on our entire judicial system. You know, drug dealers, that I'm, we can't ask for bail on any drug charge except the most serious of all, drug trafficking, which is a very difficult charge to prove. But people selling a lot of weight of drugs to make it a B felony, which is, you know, next to murder, which is an A, we can't ask for bail on. Now, one of the problems that's afflicting Long Island and other areas, of course, is opium and the drug trade. And you have vicious, violent gangs that operate in Long Island. Tell us about that. And how does the new laws as far as bail affect or does it affect some of these drug gangs? Yes, it does, because, um, you know, if we catch someone who's selling, we can't ask for bail. We used to be able to, you know, maybe infiltrate the gang by arresting someone who was willing to talk to us, who was willing to tell us, you know, who the higher-ups were, where the drugs were coming from. Now nobody has any um, desire to talk to anybody because they're being released the next morning right out of the, the front doors of the courthouse. So there's no incentive for them to spill and give the beans on somebody higher up because they're out anyway. Exactly. There's there's no incentive and there's no consequences to people who are committing crimes over and over. Um, we had a, a person in Nassau County who was committing burglaries at night in, in all these businesses and 
would steal the computer system, money that might be around, things from inside the business. He was arrested 12 times for 12 different burglaries and released every morning because there's no bail on uh, commercial burglaries. Now tell me about MS-13, which is a dangerous gang, which I know operates in Long Island. Tell us about it. Yes, MS-13 um, had a very strong presence, people, and we did a great job in pushing back against them, but they don't go away. They're kind of sitting back waiting and things like like this that make the county less safe just gives them encouragement to start increasing gang activity again. You know, one thing that, that is, is up, shots fired in Nassau County is up over 29%. And what that tells me is that there's more violent criminals on the streets with illegal guns. So let's say you become district attorney. I know it's a very competitive race. So what can you do if the law on the books is there's no bail? There's no bail that's required for some of these crimes. Well, there's a there's a couple of ways that I would um, deal with that. You know, first I would develop strategies with the police to go after, um, you know, gun traffickers, drug traffickers. I would also go up to Albany with uh, my fellow district attorneys. There is something called the District Attorneys Association of New York State. Every district attorney belongs to and push back and demand changes to this law. And then I would also like to um, teach our young ADAs, you know, um, who might not know the law that well, teach them how to examine a case to see if there's a charge that should have been brought that is bail eligible. To do a thorough investigation of a person's background so we can make an argument. And, um, you know, that's how we're going to have to start pushing back. No, because certainly that's, and I think that unites right and left. Everybody's concerned about crime. The more it grows, the more everybody wants to band together. What about anti-Semitism in Long Island? What's happening in that realm as far as making it making it tougher for somebody to engage in hate against Jews and other minorities? Well, that's one of the issues. Um, you know, anti-Semitism, excuse me, anti-Semitism is increasing. Um, there's I'm sure you know Zev, I'm not telling you something you don't know, but there was a young man, Joey Borgen, um, who was beaten in New York City because uh, of, that he was Jewish. And that, that can't be allowed. One of the first things I, I'm going to do in the office is we need to increase our bias crime unit. We need to make sure the ADAs who are working on those bias cases have the right training to know when to, A, recognize a, a bias crime, B, see if it's a pattern of bias crime, and then immediately deal with it. And another thing we also need is to continue education programs, which the district attorney's office does, um, to go out and talk to schools and try to, you know, teach these young people, these, these young children, that they need to respect one another, and they also need to tell us if something does happen. Because if they keep it to themselves, we don't know what's happening on the street until something much worse happens. Um, Joey Borgen had spoken out against the bail reform for assault cases because he knows he was the victim um, of an assault. And he knows what happened to the, the people who were arrested. I remember interviewing him right after it happened, and it's certainly so frightening to be so such a blatant anti-Semitic attack. It's just mind-boggling in today's day and age. And we've unfortunately he's not the only one. There are other cases. We've reported on cases of people uh, who was chased down just for being Jewish and threatened with their lives in New York, which is unconscionable. And that's what we have to strengthen and fight against that, the hate. Absolutely, absolutely correct. Um, you know. The fact that this is going on in this day and age sometimes is mind-boggling. But that's where, you know, a serious push to prosecute and prosecute these as hate crimes, um, which make them more serious. And, you know, get the word out that this is what we're doing when people decide to, uh, you know, to commit such awful crimes. And, um, you know, 
Joey Borgen actually did an ad for me because he knows that I'm the real prosecutor in this race. I've been doing this for 32 years. I know Nassau County. I know our system. And I know how to make it work in the best way possible for our communities, all of our communities. And Donnelly is our guest. She is currently the deputy chief of the Nassau County District Attorney's Office, and she's running for district attorney. What's your relationship like with the Jewish community? Tell us about it. I have a very good relationship with the Jewish community. I have been to a number of events um, while I was I'm running for office, and I've gotten a, just a wonderful welcome from everybody and every place that I've gone to. So here's the toughest question of the interview so far. And are you ready? I asked I'm every elect. I asked everybody running for office or any elected official. I'm surprised at the answers that I get. When you're on the campaign trail, I know COVID was maybe made a little more difficult. You get to sample different ethnic foods. What's your favorite Jewish food or kosher food that you're eating on the campaign trail? I have had some of the best kosher rugula I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and I have a weakness for it. So every time I go and I see and, you know, someone offers me, I said, well, I have to take it. <laughs> right. I told you it was the toughest question of the, of the interview. So... Here you are, you are a Republican running against a Todd Kaminsky, a Democrat. In New York, the word Republican doesn't have the same connotations. It certainly gets a lot of reaction. So do you find it tough running as a Republican? Now, Nassau County has always skewed Republican, but in the last number of years, we've seen it shift more to, to a Democratic status, status. So do you find it tougher running as a Republican? What do you hear out there? You know, my Nassau County neighbors care about safety. When I speak to them, by the end of our conversation or during our conversation, it doesn't matter. It's not what the party is. It's about the person. And they see that I am the person who is going to stand up for them. I have been, you know, prosecuting cases for 32 years, looking out for victims of crime. That's what I do. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. I'm not a politician. I didn't go to Albany and make victims of crime victimized again by creating this law, which uh, part of the law was found just found unconstitutional by a Suffolk County Supreme Court judge. What part was found unconstitutional? So there was a part in the in the bail and discovery where a criminal was allowed to go into the crime scene um, with his attorney. And, you know, so to speak, revisit the scene of the crime. Now, this goes for if your house is violated. The man in Suffolk County broke into a, a well, it was a business, but still, and stole a safe with $60,000. And now they make a motion saying, okay, we want you to keep that crime scene frozen until we can get there. And do. If someone's trying to run a business, they would just burglarize, lost $60,000, you can't reopen. Wow. And so, and, you know, that goes for any sexual assault victim. If, if you know, goodness it took place at your house or took place at a friend's house, you know, we're going to say, okay, you can, you know, be victimized again and have someone come in. So that was, and, it was ruled on the Constitution of all of New York State, correct? Well, it's the only ruling so far on it. So even though it was a Suffolk County Supreme Court judge, right now that's, you know, um, the case law as it stands. I'm sure it's going to be appealed. I'm sure it's going to go further up in the system. But I think it was a, a good decision, and I think it was a smart decision. Um, basically what the judge was saying is the victim has a Fourth Amendment right, and we're forgetting about the victim. With somebody so concerned about the criminal, we forget about the victim. That's unfortunately part of what's been happening. Now, exactly. Let me ask you this. Do we have any more knowledge? It was a number of weeks ago, maybe it was a month or so ago, in Long Beach, the Chabad, uh, they had their center broken into on the Sabbath. They had some of the scrolls of Torah were stolen. There was some damage that was done. I know they caught one perpetrator. Do we know any more information about what happened to the Torah scrolls and some of the other artifacts from the synagogue? Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that case, and unfortunately, we don't have any further information. The individual who was arrested um, has a, a mental disease or defect, 
and can't talk to us or can't explain what happened. So the uh, police are continuing to, um, you know, search where, where he was found, search, you know, with the hopes of, of recovering those those um, uh, precious precious things. Right. It's. Uh, I know. It, uh, each week that goes by makes it harder to perhaps find, the, and the person who was arrested uh, is certainly not in full mental status. And he claims he has an, had an accomplice, but so far there have been no leads, as far as I've heard, as far as trying to track down or find who the accomplice is. Right. And you know, that one of the other things that bail that this bail reform thing did. We used to be able to when a person got arrested. I'll use the example of um, Subway Shover, you know, who was trying to push people in front of the subway. They would be arrested, and we could ask the judge to hold them on bail and then ask the judge to send them to a hospital. Now, we can't ask for bail on these crimes, so we can't ask them to be sent to a hospital. And, you know, people with, with a mental disease... If you say, we'd like you to voluntarily go to the hospital, it's doubtful they're going to go. Right, right. And in this case, it's he's certainly a mentally unstable individual who did it. He was caught wearing nothing but he was but a, but a, but a talus, a prayer shawl. So you're dealing with a deranged individual. Right. But, certainly, but if, we could get him, if we could get him help, if we could, you know, maybe get him on the right medication, maybe then we would be able to talk to him and get a, a straighter answer or a better answer. Even the family of, you know, the, the woman who they call the subway sho- shover was telling everyone she needs help. Please get her help. And we in the district attorney's office have, have lost uh, one of the ways we used to try to do that. Well, it may, it may not be within your purview, Anne, but maybe some of these mental institutions should also be there. Their, their discharge policy should be to check because some of these individuals have been discharged from hospitals, mental hospitals, when they shouldn't be discharged, and they create havoc and create crime on the streets. Right. If we don't get their mental issue under control and we release them back to the streets, they're likely going to go back to the same behavior. Criminally, if you're convicted under, um, you know, of a crime under the fact that you were a, uh, you had a mental disease or defect, then the doctors must keep you for X amount of time and then have to do a review before you let out. Unlike if you just checked into a hospital and you say after 30 days, I want to leave. And what's your biggest challenge in running for district attorney? Um, I would have to say... Uh, the biggest challenge is, is trying to, to see how we're going to work around, as you asked me before, this, this bail issue, the issue of how bad it is for drug cases. I, I mean, the opioid crisis is not gone. It may have gotten a little quiet during the pandemic, but it's still there. And the fact that we can't ask for bail on people who are selling drugs is just, as we were saying before, mind-boggling. That no, certainly is. Now, a lot of people are focused on it, but a lot of people are not. This election might be determined by a small amount of votes. How do you? How do we motivate people to participate and vote on Election Day? Because the issues here are crucial. I think that the most important thing for people to know is that this race is going on and what the issues are. They should, know, they should know they have the opportunity to vote early. You can vote during this week um, because, if, you know, if something was to happen on Election Day or you didn't want to leave the House on Election Day, you could already have cast your vote. Your vote. And I think this campaign needs to be about, you know, the safety of everyone in your family, and people need to know that. This election is about safety of your family safety of our communities in Nassau County, Sorry, uh, communities, communities that I've been protecting for the last 32 years and want to continue to protect. So I think if people know the issue, that will motivate them to get out and vote. 
Ann Donnelly, a career prosecutor, she was with the is with the district attorney's office in Nassau County for 32 years, running for district attorney on the Republican line. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Talk line radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the Talkline network and Talkline's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100. Or email info at talklinenetwork.com. Thanks for listening. For continuous Jewish programs, talklinenetwork.com or our 24-hour-a-day listen line at 641-741-0389. For past shows, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Instagram, and all major podcast platforms, or jewishpodcast.org. Thanks for listening to the TalkLineNetwork.com. Talk line.